Next Thursday, we've... F Sunday, revelations in Ruth Rendell Mysteries. Are you telling me that Russell molested a child? Well, he frightened her. It was a mistake. Let me tell you something, Mike. You get your mind back onto your work and not whatever else you're thinking about, or we're going to fall out. George Baker is Inspector Wexford, Sunday at 7.45. And at five past nine, it's a dangerous shout for Blue Watch. Yeah. Yeah. What's all this about a nuclear container leaking a ticket? It is, it's leaking. London's Burning, Sunday, five past nine. Romantic entertainment next on ITV with Scylla and Blind Date. I'm in the mood for love. Simply because you're near me. Funny but when you're near me. I'm in the mood for love. Heaven is in your eyes. Rekindle your love for chicken with Paxo. You all right? You ready for tomorrow? Yeah. No. Just don't feel ready. Okay. You said that when I took the stabilizers off your bike. Did I fall? It wobbled just a bit till you got used to the idea. Nothing changes, huh? People don't. I still can't pass those goalposts without wanting to. What? <laughs> that one in. Two Cronenbergs, Jack. Of course, you realise we're missing the cup final with your wedding and all. What cut final? You're already all right. have shut up shop. There are still big names you can put your finger on at Comet. For a store that puts the customer first, you know where to come. Secret ingredients smuggled in from thousands of miles away. <laughs> oh, I had Andrew pack you should have done it once. What's unbelievable about that tank? Why do Walker's crisps always taste so good? With the people this Sunday, the great free weekly colour magazine everyone's talking about. Plus Crime Buster, an extra colour section. Buy the big value people this Sunday. Tonight, someone's going to be beetled. Airport UK, we're putting this beacon on. Oh, what's this for then? It's a beacon. It's, it's a flying beacon. Can you stop it? Hey, Jim, Jim it! <laughs> 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 oh. 
the Go Lightlies go camping. Watch out, Beatles about tonight at 7.35. Gentlemen, it's Blind Date, and here is your host, Miss Scylla Black. Thank you, hello, and welcome to another Blind Date. Now, you know, conscience is a funny thing. It doesn't stop you from doing what you shouldn't but it just stops you from enjoying it. <laughs> is that right or is that right? <laughs> yeah, oh no, the fellas disagree. But right now we're going to enjoy chatting up three lads, all looking for a blind date. There they are sitting over there. Welcome, lads. <laughs> Let's start off with you, number one. What's your name and where do you come from? Hi, sir. My Hi. name's John and I come from London. Mm. Yeah. Very laid back, aren't you, John? I believe... No, I'm not at all. I'm trying my best. <laughs> yeah, you're very casual and relaxed. I, I hear that you are obsessed with the one uh, Glynis Barber, is that right? It has been said, it has been said. Why? What has she got that no other girl's got for you? Well, God, what a woman. She's a <laughs> fine woman. She's got a fine shape. She's got good, good, uh, good hair. She talks well and she comes across well on, well on TV. I think I could handle her, you know. She's a fine lady. Fine. Well, we've got a fine lady beyond those screens. Maybe she'll pick you. Maybe you'll think she's fine. You'll give I'd her like the elbow. So. I'd like to think so, sir. Oh, I hope so, too. What about you, number two? What's your name and where do you come from? Hi, sir. My name's Mark and I'm from Swindon. Yeah. Hope you're on with the audience, Mark. What do you do down there in Swindon? I'm a gym instructor with a well-known gym. I can tell. <laughs> I can tell because he's got, they're, they're all your own shoulders, aren't they? No pads in there. Every single thing. <laughs> Don't you feel a wimpo next to him? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rambo talking already. <laughs> Are you obsessed with anybody like Glynis Barber? Um, Sharon Davis, as soon as she's very nice. Um, she's big. Yeah. <laughs> How tall are you? Five, seven and a little bit. She's six foot three. She's six foot three and a little bit. <laughs> Beautiful shape, yes. Very. I wish you luck on blind day Thanks. tonight. Moving on to you, number three. What's your name and where do you come from? I'm Phil. I'm from North Tyneside. Oh, great. <laughs> Yeah, I'm studying to be a hairdresser, and I'm oh, part-time no more. Oh, lovely. I mean, if you could do anybody's uh, part, don't you duh mention my uh. If you could do, <laughs> if you could do anybody's uh, part from me, who would you like to get your hands on? Oh, Bridget Bardo. Bridget Bardo, oh, very beautiful yeah, lady. Yeah, love it. Yeah, well, she wasn't born when you were going. No, that doesn't make a difference, does it really? Oh, well, I, <laughs> I love you. <laughs> <laughs> all three of you lads, enjoy Blind Date. I'm sure you will. May the best man win, all right? Thank See you thank later. You very much. See you later. <laughs> oh, lovely. Well, which one of those three lads will go on a blind date? Well, here's the girl who has to make that decision. She's from Swansea, and her name's Sharon. Come in, Sharon! <laughs> Sharon, tell everybody what you do for a living. Well, I'm training to be a secretary in a tertiary college. Isn't that lovely? But you're really a, a little softy. Tell everybody what you did, Chuck. <gasps> a fella came up to me and asked me if I <laughs> wanted my, uh, picture, uh, paint my picture. Yeah. And I said yes, and he said, oh, well, it'd be five pound. So I gave him the five pound and he ran off. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's not nice, but I hope it didn't paint a very good colour of love. No, someone else came along and they uh, done one for free. He liked oh. me so much, so you just... Uh, Isn't that nice? Well, yeah. and here you live to tell the tale, and you're back yeah. in London again. And we've yeah. got three <laughs> fellas beyond those screens, and the lovely... I'd be spoilt for choice. What are your questions there? Start off with the first one, Chuck. Right, this is not question number one. I am training to be a secretary. Convince me that you should be my boss. And this question is to number one. Well, uh, hopefully it'll be one in my diary. So if you could please pencil in uh, a lunch appointment for tomorrow. Uh, 12.30, the Savoy Grill. You and I. Sounds good to me. Okay, I keep that in mind. <laughs> right, uh, number two. I'm a gym instructor. Um, now, in my job, I wear very tight short shorts and very tight vests. Now, if you were to work for me, would you dress accordingly? Ooh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> right, number three. That one will be easy, I would say, because with me being a hairdresser, You'd have a lot of appointments, but you wouldn't have any disappointments. Oh. 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 <laughs> okay, um, this is question number two. My dream is to become an hair hostess. In what way would you want to reach the skies? Uh, number three. Well, I want to be a pilot. Oh. <laughs> and I want to fly my own my own freelance hairdressing in the sky and run my own airline. Oh, and I could and be your secretary, is it? Oh, yes. <laughs> and this would be called British Hairways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I'll ask the question to number two. Well, Sharon, I think the only way that I'd reach the heights was that if I was a kite under your control, I'd let you pull my strings. Oh. <laughs> Okay, this is for number one. Well, Sharon, um, I actually work in the city, and uh, the way things are going at the moment, the only way I could ever get to the top would maybe to change career to a window cleaner and work <laughs> in the NatWest Tower. <laughs> <laughs> so you like heights, then? Well, it depends. Hold my hand and we'll see what happens. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. Right. laughs> This is my third question. I am an Aquarius and I love the water, especially swimming and surfing. Are you a water baby? And um, this is for number two. Well, I'm a highboard diving champion. <laughs> <laughs> so why not pick me, Sharon, and together we'll hit the heights. Oh, oh that's good. <laughs> um, yes, number three. No, I'm not a water baby. I'm a jelly baby. Because, <laughs> because by the sounds of your voice, you've turned my knees to jelly. Ah, uh, contestant number one. Well, I'm actually an oarsman, to be honest. But um, rather than a water baby, I quite like the sound of a water macho brute. <laughs> Chuck? Well, we'll <laughs> find out. <laughs> you will find yeah. out, indeed. I mean, because here to help you make up your mind is Graham with that quick reminder. Sharon, will your blind date be number one who take you to lunch at the Savoy but might have to clean the windows to pay for it? <laughs> or will you choose sporty number two who just loves to be your puppet on a string? <laughs> or how about number three, a member of the shampoo set who's just a jelly baby at heart? Is yours. <laughs> Thank goodness for that, Sharon. You've made your mind up. Who are you going to go for? Number two. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, what's swung it for you for number two then? Oh, I think it's this uh, this tight shorts. <laughs> <laughs> You look such a nice girl as well. <laughs> <laughs> the tight shorts, the best. 
Uh, but you will be disappointed at the two that you turned down. I mean, first of all, you turned down number three. How could you? The hairdresser. He's wonderful. His name's Phil, and he comes from Tyne and Weir. Come in, Phil. <laughs> Also, you turned down number one, and that was John from London. Come in, John. And this is it. Are you ready for this? Well, you did say you like tight shorts and tight vests. Mm. <laughs> and here he is, your very own blind day for this evening. You chose number two. It was Mark from Swindon. Come in, Mark. What do you think? Can you imagine him in the tight shorts and the vest? No, he's my height. Suits <laughs> <laughs> you really? It's fantastic. Where are you going on your blind date? Who's going to choose that? The lady cheese. Okay, come on, sweetheart. All right. Oh, what does it say? Oh, a day out in Safari in Windsor. Oh, yes. <laughs> a day on Safari in Windsor. I mean, I don't know whether you've been to Windsor, have you? No, I haven't before. actually. No. It's a beautiful, beautiful... Actually, you can stop off at our house on the way back to tea, if you like. I'll be in there. I'll be in there. <laughs> but there, I mean, have you seen the killer whales? There's one called Winnie there. She's beautiful. <laughs> all we ask, we, a little question. Will you come back next week and tell us all about it? Yeah, yeah, of course, course we'll do it. Oh, <laughs> a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, wish them well. It's Sharon and Mark. See you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Well, last week, Joanne and Roy spent their date in the saddle cycling round Suffolk. I mean, when you got off your bikes, I mean, you actually <laughs> did spend your day, didn't yeah. you? We did. Cycling. Yes. 28 miles. <laughs> 28 miles. What yeah. did you think of each other after 28 miles? <laughs> Shall Nothing. we find saddle out? Saddle sore. Oh, saddle sore. <laughs> I won't ask where. Let's find out. Between me and Joe, it was a bit, bit frosty at first. Not frosty, but we was just a bit inhibited by each other. Even though we was on a date, I felt it was a bit clingy. When we was walking around the craft centre, I went to look at loads of stuff and he was always behind me the whole time. You know, he was sort of sticking to me. It was because I was trying to, I think, trying too hard to put over a good impression instead of just being myself. I'd have liked somebody a bit more wild for the day out. I was a bit more mad, you know. It would have gone absolutely crackers, which he didn't. I think the maddest thing I'd done was picked up a bunch of dead bluebells. <laughs> the craziest thing Roy did all day was ring his bell on his bike. <laughs> I've got to say this, I mean, she had this amazing pair of clots on, a loose pair of clots. And every time a car or sort of gust of wind or a bus went past, yeah, up they came, there's that wind there. <laughs> <laughs> I've been out with a bloke who's got curly hair and a moustache. I don't really go for them type. <laughs> Joe's best part about her body is her eyes. I could fall in love with her eyes alone. Definitely. I wouldn't really find Roy sexy. And um, I wouldn't really say it was fancy bill, not to me anyway, maybe to others where he lives, but no. Um, do I fancy Joe? Yes, I do fancy Joe. Because she's a very fancyable woman. I am quite a romantic person. Um, I do like to sort of, you know, hold hands and have a cuddle, but I didn't feel like that with Roy. All. Um, I think he could be quite romantic. Um, maybe if I'd have given him a bit of a chance, he would have been. The goodnight kiss was 
just a good night kiss. It wasn't a mad, passionate good night kiss. Unfortunately. Um, when he first walked around the screen and he said, "Oh, I give her eleven out of 10, at first I thought, "Oh no, <laughs> it's going to be one of them who's a bit sickly." <laughs> I think I said something like eleven out of ten, which was uh, after the day. I think we'll go for twelve out of ten. So. He's got a nice personality and he's very gentlemanly. He opens the doors for you the whole time. You know, he takes care of you. He really wants to look after you. Uh, I'd say they were his best qualities. And he's got nice legs in his shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Joanne, well, you heard our audience, didn't you? I mean, it was all lots of ah. Oh, oh, I mean, how could you say all those things about I said some it? nice things. <laughs> he's got <laughs> nice legs. <laughs> that was the last thing. He's got nice legs and shorts, but you didn't fancy him. No. no. He's a very nice lad. We had a really, really good day out, didn't we? Yeah. We really en enjoyed it. I mean, you fell in love with her eyes. You said that was the best thing. She's got about her. I mean, isn't there anything? I mean, now is your chance. Is there anything that you dislike apart from her eyes and the, those glorious legs? Even after what she said. Yeah. I still think she's 100%. What about, tell us about these culottes that get flapping around Clops. your hero. Culottes. <laughs> culottes. <laughs> what do you call them? No, culottes. Well, in Liverpool, they call them. Anybody flashes your legs. Let's see these legs that are so. <laughs> oh, was it worth it? <laughs> <laughs> Rise. Rise legs are better than he's mine. He's got lovely legs. Yeah, he's got I lovely mean, legs. Oh, how could you say the most exciting thing? I can't believe this, Joanne. You're such a lovely girl. Even he said it. God knows why, but I mean, he said you're a lovely girl. And you said the most exciting thing that he did on the date was to ring the bell on the bike. I don't know. <laughs> Do that. I was only joking. Are you sure? Yeah. I mean, the big question, the burning question is, are you going to see each other again? Well, we haven't really discussed it, have we? Not indeed. Have we? we? Have we? It's like Victoria. Have we? Why you did it? I mean, if it were, yeah, I mean, all right, you went on a cycling date. If it would have been a more romantic date, do you think you would have gone on better together? You know. Yeah. Got abroad somewhere? No. <laughs> <laughs> he says yes, I said no, because we had a good laugh though. Mm. I mean, it was a lot better for us both. Because yeah. I mean, we had a good laugh. We could enjoy ourselves on the day out, couldn't we? If it had been a bit more romantically, like, you know, a candlelit dinner and all that. So you're going to see each other again? If I go out to Huddersfield, up round there, mm -hmm. then I'll go. You will. But you won't make the effort to come down here. Well, he can send me a postcard because he's going to work abroad, so I won't be able to see him. Ah. Unless I get a flight out there. Well, let's hope somebody else thinks you're more interesting abroad than just ringing a bell on a bike. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, you've been great sports to come on blind date. And you've still got that. Actually, I agree with you. She has got beautiful eyes. <laughs> Shame about the legs, but the eyes are. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Joanne and Roy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joanne knows I'm only joking, but it's time for us to take a break now. But we will be back in a moment to find out what Anthony and Siobhan thought of each other after their date in Cumbria. And, of course, we'll be meeting the lucky lad who will have the pick of these three lovely girls. So, see you in a couple of minutes. Good morning. You make six shirts exactly like my favorite Van Heusen by this time tomorrow. Oh, pardon, sir. A Van Heusen isn't easy to match. Our collars have nine separate pieces. Our shoulder seams are double-stitched French seams. Oh, you early. You come back later. Two more hours, please. You go, you come back. Even our cuffs have linings and interlinings. I'm plain to catch, and if you give me any more... Can anyone make a Van Heusen like Van Heusen? There's not a shred of evidence. The Draco Noir offshore watch. Tough, black, and unerringly accurate. 
Your gift with a 100 milliliter eau de toilette spray. Draca Noir by Guy La Roche. Feel the power. In Allied's book, furnishing means a world of living ideas. Right now, you can save on everything you need for a beautifully coordinated home. We've suites. This stylish three-piece suites, half price. Curtains. These lovely ready-made curtains are half price. And, of course, an outstanding range of carpets. This color roll carpet's half price, too, at only $6.49 a square yard. And for the bedroom, we've curtains, linens, and famous name beds, like this Myers double divan at just $199.95. Sheer inspiration, great value. That's Allied, where everything is nice and easy. If I had Tina Fine's bait range, do you think I'd grow up to be a ballet dancer? I can't see it somehow, but you never can tell. I thought you were going to be a ballet dancer. You're joking. First bowler. No, you definitely wanted to be a ballet dancer. You did, you know. You did? Millions of little Britons have grown up great knowing beans means hands. She's back, asking the questions no one else would dare. The Dame Edna Experience, tonight at 10.20. And welcome back to Blind Date. Now, you know, a sure sign that you're getting past it is when you feel like the morning after, the night before, and you haven't been anywhere. <laughs> well, just think about that one. I've been there, done that. But right now, let's go and meet our three lovely girls waiting for a blind date. <laughs> Start with you, number one. What's your name and where do you come from? My name's Jessica, and I'm from Cambridge. Oh, lovely. <laughs> now, Jessica, are you studying at the moment? Uh, I've just finished my uh, university career, if you like, <laughs> so I'm an unemployed now. But you're very clever. Oh, <laughs> tremendously <laughs> clever. With, and you're very sporty and very brave. I mean, is it true that, I mean, you've... Uh, have you jumped out of aeroplanes? Oh, yeah, lots of times. How many? Well, I've only done 80. That was this weekend I did some, so... 80? 80? 80. Well, but, I mean, why do you want to fling yourself out? I mean, have you got this lemming sort oh, of thing? Oh, no, no. Throw yourself out the plane. Just... <laughs> 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 it's a bit like that. When your first go is like that, because you get pushed out almost. It's like, ah! But after that, you just, yeah, it's such a big buzz. Is oh, it's it really? adrenaline. It's better than everything. And have you ever broken anything on landing? No, but I, I nearly didn't have a parachute open on me once. That was horrible. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, really, you can't even but get it, me on a plane. it opened, you know, and I had another one as well. Well, so. I could tell it opened. Yeah. You look beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish you many more jumps to come, all right? But what about you, number two? What's your name and where do you come from? Hi, Scylla. I'm Judy and I'm from Cheshire. Oh. <laughs> What do you do for a living, love? Um, I work for uh, quite a large fashion, fashion house in a departmental store. Really? Mm -hmm. Are you as brave as number one here, jumping out of aeroplanes and things like yeah. that? Not quite. Not quite. I'd like to have a go, though. Oh, really? Yes, what what like do you do for go. fun? All I do is work behind a bar, so during the day I tell people they look nice, and in the evening it's ice and a slice. So it's, it's, what? <laughs> it's ice and a and slice. slice. <laughs> ice and a slice of what? <laughs> I don't go to bars. I don't go to bars. Chunks of ice and slices of lemon. Oh, chunks of ice. Because you work in a bar. I've just gone. I don't go to bars. I'm sorry, number two. Let's move on to you, number three. What's your name? Where do you come from? Hi, Stella. My name's Kay, and I'm from Sheffield. Ah, you see. Now, don't confuse me, number three, like number two did. What do you do for a living? <laughs> 
I'm a receptionist for a large production company at the moment near in the village where I live. It's a, it's a very interesting job because yeah. we're dealing with companies all over the world. And do you have time to have a hobby then if it's a very interesting job? I do. Uh, I've got a very, very unusual hobby at the moment for a girl my age. It's barbershop singing. Is it really? Yes. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Girls, this fella's going to have a hard time over there beyond those screens. And may the best girl win. I do. He's going to have a hard time. Enjoy yourselves, all right? Thank you. I'll see you in a moment. See you later. <laughs> Well, that's a smashing choice for any lad. And here's the lad in question. Now, he's from Leeds, and his name is Adrian. Come in, Adrian. Boogie, 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 boogie. Oh, Adrian. Tell the girls beyond those screens about yourself. Well, as you say, I'm Adrian, I'm 23, from North Yorkshire, and I'm a medical student. Yes, you are indeed. Yeah. I mean, you're not long in this country, are you, Chuck? I mean, I'm you have not, big no. plans for the future. I'm bound for shores afar. I'm going to Brisbane very shortly. Oh. Oh. Is it because you watch Neighbours on the telly? That's right, I'm in, <laughs> I'm in love with Jason Donovan, yes. <laughs> I'm sure he'd be pleased about that. <laughs> but you'll go right off Jason Donovan when you see those three girls beyond those screens. Oh, All right? God. And you can only make one choice. And you've got three questions to ask those beautiful girls. Oh, it's a bit of a difficult task for you. Okay. Fire away with your first question. Right. Are we sitting comfortably? Yes. yes right. Thank you. First question then. This is to number two. Being a medical student, I'm keen to know what resuscitation technique you would employ if I were taken faint on our date. <laughs> oh, well, Adrian, I would think it'd be a case of the near fatal attraction. I would mop your brow and you'd come around soon, and maybe you may come around again soon again. Ooh. You don't get that on the NHS, do you? No, you don't. <laughs> You're the doctor. Right, number three, same question. Well, Adrian, I'd give you a mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, and once yes. you've had a taste of my delicious medicine, <laughs> you'd be wanting a, re a repeat prescription all the time. <laughs> number three, is, number three, is this medicine going to be addictive? <laughs> it certainly will, but you'll find out soon. <laughs> feeling the withdrawal already. Are you? <laughs> Number one. Well, after all that, uh, I think I'd have to loosen your clothing. <gasps> maybe give you a romantic heart massage. Ooh. And then after all that, I'd probably have to chuck some cold water all over you. <laughs> right, second question then. I'm a keen sportsman, and ex-girlfriends have said I think more of sport than of them. How would you overcome this? And that's number three. Um, well, I'm a good sport too, mate. And I enjoy swimming, tennis, running, and who knows, I might ring the bell you one day, you never know. Straight. <laughs> right, uh, number one. Uh, I'll make a deal with you. I'll come and watch you play your games if you promise to come and join me at my favourite sport. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, Have I missed out or something? Right? I don't know, no, no. I think I just my need to go down My favourite sport happens to be skydiving. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling dizzy up here at the moment. I couldn't do that now. What about her? She's done it 80 times. Has she? <laughs> right, number two. Well, I'm game and you're set, so let's make a match. Oh. <laughs> Sounds like a bit of a racket to me, that one there. <laughs> Third question, then. Third question to number one first. I'd love to break the bank at Monte Carlo. What's your biggest gamble? I'm not much of a gambler, 
But um, after the quest answers I've been giving you, um, I'll bet you 50p that you won't even choose me. <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, it's too high a stake for me, I think. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Number two. Well, my mother always used to say, as far as I'm concerned, when your steak is high and your chips are down, go and eat at another restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> right, number three, same question. Live dangerously, that's my motto. I've always wanted to tightrope across the River Thames. But say I should fall into the water, how about turning the cards and you giving me a mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation? <laughs> it is make your mind up time. Don't tell us who you're going for because, as always, is Graham with that quick reminder. Well, Adrian, will you choose high-flying number one? Surely she's worth 50p. Or do you prefer the fatal attractions of number two? The game bird who'll be more than a match for you. <laughs> or how about athletic number three, who'd breathe life back into any faint-hearted male? <laughs> the decision is yours. <laughs> Don't make jokes. Come on, who are you going for, Adrian? Number three. And I know you said, is that good or bad? <laughs> the audience would have cheered whether it was number one or number two or number three. First of all, you turned down number one, and that was our Jessica from Cambridge. Come in, Jessica. I, uh, Went to university, she did. <laughs> you having second thought? <laughs> well, what about this? You also turned down number two, and that was Judy from Cheshire. Come in, Judy. <laughs> uh, Judy, Judy, Judy. <laughs> but this is it. Adrian, young Adrian, before you go off to Australia, you're going to spend your blind date with number three, and that was our Kay from Sheffield. Come in, Kay. <laughs> Much the audience favourite, eh, Adrian? <laughs> what do you think on first scene? Very nice. Lady in red, very nice. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of him? He's a medical student. Uh, he's not exactly Simon Mullabon, but I'll give him 9.9.9.9.9.9. <laughs> 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 that's not bad, is it? Ooh, that's not bad. <laughs> Who's going to choose where you're going on the date? 9.9.9.9. <laughs> <laughs> the end of the poop. Uh, <laughs> I do. I don't, what do you reckon? French. I don't know. Uh, I'll let Kay choose. I always lose when I gamble. Come <laughs> on, Kay. Thank you. What does it say, Chuck? Oh, gosh. It could be windsurfing on the Manchester ship tonight. Is it not skydiving? <laughs> no, it's not, not skydiving. Sky no, it's not. It's a trip to Turkey. Ah! Oh! 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 <laughs> Turkey! Turkey! <laughs> you made the joke. Is that what you're doing? Or do you do that anyway? I do that anyway. Oh, you do? I'm yes. sorry. I was seeing secret <laughs> jokes. Yes, you're going on a trip to Turkey. In fact, all we ask for you, when you've had all the food and been to the harem, is to come back next week and tell us all about it, if they let you out. Yeah, we no will. problem. So you do no that? Problem. We will, yes. I'm sure you're going to have a ball. Isn't she beautiful? She's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Adrian and Kay, enjoy Turkey. Right. Compared to a few years ago, the new Duracell now lasts up to 20% longer. De 
discover the unique, utterly delicious golden moments from Ferrero Rocher. British Satellite Broadcasting will be on air in the spring. We've listened to thousands of people's ideas and opinions about what makes great television, which is why we're launching with five themed channels. You shake my nerves and you're out of my brain. Too much love drives a man insane. You broke my will, what a free. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. And we'll continue to listen. So you get to see more of the programs you really want to see. BSB Five Channel TV. You watch, we listen. Oh, I'm so sorry. Is that yours? It was Harvey's. Drink Harvey's Bristol Green. So make it easy on Unless you're one of those people who enjoy doing things the hard way, make it easy on yourself. Sign a thing called a direct debit. You see, when the new community charge, the poll tax, starts next April, a direct debit means that your bank or building society can handle all the payments for you. And you can pay lots of other bills this way too. So look out for the special form from your local authority. And with one signature, let direct debit make the community charge a whole lot easier. All the cats in the musical, they're all six foot tall. Is it those diabolical stems? <laughs> Comedy close to home, Sunday, 7.15. week Anthony and Siobhan spent their blind date at a survival training center in Cumbria. Oh, how sweet. Lovely. Here we go. Out of bounds, this. All right, so nobody is allowed oh, to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like using slugs? <laughs> harder. Come on, harder still. Oh, no! <laughs> well, it's a good source of vitamin C. That's the big thing that you can find. There's, there's in short supply as well. Go on, you eat one. Feel so... This is gross. <laughs> yeah, it's not like it's a survival. Uh, Come on. Well, I don't know if I Come should. On. I mean, I like trout and everything, but... It doesn't taste of anything. Just take it in your mouth and swallow it. <laughs> I've actually eaten it. <laughs> 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 okay, I've been doing this. Come on, it doesn't taste of anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's a waste of food. We'll add that to the stew. He is a coward, a really big coward. <laughs> 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 I'll see you in the um, morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have the. Uh, <laughs> I'll have the trout. Do you sometimes get them from the garden and eat them? Yeah. Just when you've been on out? Oh, oh, it's it's the, the, um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I've got to pass out, actually. How <laughs> <laughs> about your worm? Oh, I, I really, will really be do sick. prefer cheesecake. Oh, I, I thought you would be, be cheesecake. Just 
try a worm each. My hands are filthy. I've probably got them on top. Uh, did you say typhoid? Yeah. <laughs> Anthony. Well, you obviously survived the course, but I mean, did you survive each other? Let's find out. Yeah, I think when the screen went back, I think, yeah, Siobhan, I think she did fancy me, yeah. When I'm <laughs> when I set my eyes on him after all the excitement, I thought, oh, yes, you're nice, but I didn't fancy him. Um, I mean, she just certainly wasn't my type, and I, I mean, I, I obviously didn't want to lead the girl on. I didn't think it would be right to do that. We had to the show, so that was one of the first things when we got on our survival course. And uh, Anthony made it, you know, quite clear that he wanted to be in charge. He said, you go and collect all the bracken and I'll build it. And I thought, no way, this is going to be a joint effort. She was quite impressed, really, at the way that I, you know, I knew a little bit about survival, you know, I was there. <laughs> you know, I'll sort it out for you, don't worry. I think she was quite impressed with that. Anthony didn't impress me a little bit, no. <laughs> I was off putting, actually, you know. It's meant to be a shared day, not a day where I'll delegate, you do. I don't know if she'd be the sort of person who could obviously cope on her own. And I think she'd need a man there, you know, obviously to help her out now and then. <laughs> he wouldn't eat the slugs, the worms and the um, eyes, but I just thought he was a bit of a wimp. <laughs> I, I think she actually enjoyed the food. That was, the, that was the alarming thing about it. I mean, how can you be romantically, how can you get, like, romantically involved with somebody who likes eating slugs, worms and <laughs> Anthony chose to go water skiing. Now, I would have liked to have gone horse riding. He knew the fact that I would like to have gone horse riding. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not really au fait with horses. I don't like them too much. So I said, well, why don't we go water skiing? He showed off a lot when he water skied. You know, he thought, even though he was very good, you know, I've got to admit that, he was excellent. But, I, you know, he did think he was Mr Wonderful up on those skis. <laughs> we spent three quarters of an hour in the water with Siobhan trying to teach her how to water ski. And I mean, at the end of it, she was going along the water at 40 miles an hour with her backside in the water, with water shooting everywhere. And obviously she was in severe pain. And I was like, let go, let go, Siobhan. She's like, whoosh. He, um, after I'd been water skiing, you know, I thought it was nice for him to say this. He said, oh, well done. You do it next time. You'll stand up. And I thought it was a nice thing. I definitely think she, she thinks I, I was vain, yeah. I wore my sunglasses the whole time. And in the car, um, he took his glasses actually off and proceeded to look at himself in them. You know, he's really... <laughs> going like this, and it was... One good thing about Siobhan, definitely, I mean, she did have nice hair. That was one, one feature about Siobhan I liked. She had very, very nice hair. He looked smart, but his height went against him, I think, you know. He, he was a bit small for me. A couple of little more, um, kind of inches on his height. It was good fun, um, but I think she'd probably make it clear, as I did, that we certainly weren't romantically involved at all. There was definitely no romantic involvement between us. <laughs> <laughs> I would have wanted there to be. Now, come on, Anthony. I mean, Siobhan, I mean, you, oh, she made the effort. I mean, she had the slugs and the fish wimp. eyes. And the, what, what was that, Chuck? She's Can called me a wimp, yeah. Wimp. She's called me a wimp. Why didn't you eat the fish eye or the slug or, or the worm? It's absolutely revolting. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I mean, the, you saw on there the way she ate the slug. I mean, she put it in, she chewed it, swallowed it and grinned. Full of vitamin C. <laughs> Vitamin C. Look, I'd rather take the tablets. I like the little orange tablets mm. I take every day. <laughs> I certainly don't need raw trout eyes. But I mean, you were on a survival course. Couldn't you have made the best of it? I mean, mm. I, I mean, it takes a lady like Siobhan to yeah. get stuck in. Why didn't you get stuck in, Chuck? I really do think, I mean, Siobhan did get stuck in. She would survive on a, on a survival course. I think I'd prefer to die, so... Hypocrite. You said I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> No, she was very good, I must admit, she was brilliant. I mean, she did everything. I mean, she was very, very good. She was eating the fish's eyes, eating the worms, the slugs, the maggots, and all of them. She, she loved them. <laughs> what about the horse riding the day before? I mean, yeah, you I mean, have to do, you have to, a little bit of give and take. Would have been nice. You sent her off for the bracken to build the, the camp. <laughs> and then, you know, you stood by there while you spit the fish eye out and let her eat these slugs and everything. She, and she then at the end to. of the day, no, but at the end yeah. of the day, 
you didn't even give her a choice. She wanted to go horse riding, but because you don't like horses, you were prepared to see her. I couldn't even suffer could more I? in Almost the drowned. But did you have a good time? Yeah. You did. She did. She had a good time. Yeah, I had and a good time. I got in the water time. and I was, come on, Siobhan, you can do it. And she was like, she really persevered and she tried hard and she had a good day. I mean, you did have a good time with the skiing. Great. It was great. It was great fun. See, it was good fun. Well, would you go out with him again? Yeah, we're getting married. We're getting married. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it, please. <laughs> no. It was good for I mean, she was good for I mean, we've got, actually, after, after we'd been on the, um, the survival course, we've gotten this real flashy car to take us back to the hotel. Oh, oh, God, no. Which no. This travelling car, this... this car, he once he saw this GTI Golf, he said, zoom, he got in that front seat, you know, in got his sunglasses on, on you know. I mean, it's fabulous. To do it here. I mean, you don't get the chance to drive in a car like that all the time, so I got her in the back and we're going along the road. <laughs> <Nice> <laughs> Up and down these country roads, round the corner, up and down, and we heard this little voice from the back. I can't be sick. Be sick. <laughs> <laughs> it's all those fish eyes and exactly. slugs you've been eating. And Siobhan was up against the car going, oh, and I was just sitting there getting the camera out, saying, is, this, is the eye coming back? Is the eye coming back? <laughs> As they say in the advert, you're wicked. <laughs> you're dead wicked. Now, yeah. apart from Anthony, yeah, Anthony, Anthony. You know. Yes. Oh, he it's insists Anthony. on that. Yeah. It's not Anthony. Anthony. Uh, no, it's no, Anthony. 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 I was going to Anthony. Anthony. It's Anthony. Just really <laughs> winding him up. <laughs> Anthony. Oh, sorry, Anthony. <laughs> Do you know, I, all, one, one thing that's all for me left to say is that, well, I wish you happy many years of wedded bliss. <laughs> <laughs> and may you have as many fish eyes as you want to eat, as well, long as you don't before. bring them up in the back of his GT Golf. GTI Golf. GTI Get Golf. It. Anyway, it's it's at, it was a joy to see you on film there, yeah, and the good. audience totally appreciated. Thank you both very much. Thanks Ladies and gentlemen, Anthony and Siobhan. for this week but make a day to join us again next week to find out whether Sharon and Mark and Adrian and Kay hit it off on their dates and of course what will we have? We'll have more blind dates for you so until next week ta-ra then ta-ra! <laughs>
peace. After dark, Tia Maria. This is Beans. He's the newest member of the Bean Street Gang. Oh, no! Do something, Sid! Not till I finish my new beans and hot dogs in smoky bacon sauce. <laughs> That's at the window of air sales. Bean Street Beans, mighty meaty beans. Ever thought of really testing your body and mind? Of using skills you have or developing new ones? Of rising to a challenge that not every civilian can? Try the Territorial Army for size. The Territorial Army, 0800 treble 5 treble 5. We're ready and waiting to talk to you. The Secret's Out, she's back on ITV. The Megastar Housewife is back for a new series, asking the questions no one else would dare. You don't have to say anything, Douglas, but does she turn you on? <laughs> From Hollywood royalty to the Washington variety, and one is son. You're a wrong boy. <laughs> You're certainly not a Nancy boy. <laughs> From royalty to commoner, they'll all be popping in. Make a date with Edna tonight at 10.20 on ITV. You're watching London Weekend Television, part of the ITV network. Beatles about. Let's sneak a peek at tonight's treats. <laughs> <laughs>